Uh, I'm more than pleased to welcome Commissioner Copps. I will have more to say about Commissioner Copps uh, in a minute. Uh, uh, it's, a, it's a great honor for me to be working on the commission alongside of him uh, and alongside Commissioner Clyburn. I'm glad she was here yesterday. She's a terrific colleague. We have a full commission up and running along with Commissioners McDowell, uh, and Commissioner Baker, uh, a, a full uh, team on the basketball court ready to get uh, to work. There are a lot of important issues, of course, that we're, that we're tackling. Um, uh, I'm, just, I'm very pleased uh, to welcome the elected uh, uh, officials who are here, all important leaders in this area. Uh, I'm very glad that uh, I think Henry Rivera is here from the Diversity Committee. I know you had a great meeting this morning. Uh, 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 Henry and the Diversity Committee uh, have rolled up their sleeves to make a series of suggestions to the FCC on areas of great importance. Henry, we, we thank you for your work. Um, uh, it's such an important topic for, for our country. Um, let, me, let me, if I could, Ralph just said come you know, uh, uh, and introduce Commissioner Coffs, but I can't resist and I just want to say a few words about the importance of, of broadband uh, and the importance of the work that uh, the Joint Center is doing by taking the time to produce a report on the particular issues that you've chosen to, um, uh, to engage with. Um, broadband is, uh, to me and to Commissioner Copps, to so many people now, the major infrastructure challenge of our generation. It's to us what railroads and electricity uh, other universal services were in the past, and we've been given at the FCC a very important task by the President and Congress to draft a national broadband strategy over the next few months that the country can then follow for the months and years after that to take us to real leadership in this important area. Now, why is broadband so important? Um, why is a robust, open, universal broadband network so important, ubiquitous, high-speed internet access. Um, I think it's because broadband is a platform for the country in three distinct, very important ways. First, broadband will be for the United States in the 21st century a platform for economic growth and opportunity. It's where New businesses will be created, small businesses around the country, potentially in every community around the country. I spoke yesterday about uh, eBay. Um, uh, over 600,000 Americans have, uh, are working now uh, at businesses, mostly small businesses, that started on the eBay platform uh, in communities all over the country. You don't have to be in Silicon Valley to start a business on eBay. You need an internet connection, though, and you need a broadband internet connection, though. Uh, similarly, we can think about the, uh, the apps economy now that's happening. There are, I'm going to get the number wrong, but call it 60,000, 70,000 applications on the iPhone, 10,000 or so applications on Android. These are all, almost all of them are new young companies employing people, three or four people per company. Some of them will succeed, some of them will fail, but they can live anywhere. Um, but you can only participate in that if you're part of broadband. So as our platform, as our engine for economic growth, I think broadband is essential. It's also essential when we think about jobs on the, uh, the job-getting side. Um, I saw yesterday uh, that, I uh, saw earlier this week, the following statistic. 75% of Fortune 500 companies do their job listings only online. If you want to find a job at 75% of Fortune 500 companies, you have to go online. Well, what does that mean for the country right now in this, in this uh, economic environment, in the kinds of communities that we're focused on? We need to find ways to get everyone online. So first, broadband is a platform for economic growth and opportunity. It's the first reason it's so important. The second reason is that broadband is our platform in the 21st century for addressing a whole series of national priorities that are of tremendous importance to the country. Healthcare, education, energy, public safety, these all will require a broadband infrastructure in the 21st century to succeed. Uh, education, I'm gonna forget the statistic now and I didn't write it down, but the percentage of um, uh, uh, Americans who uh, have jobs who came from homes that had internet access 
is very high. Ralph will ask me for the data afterwards, and I'll get it to him. But this is true. Or maybe it's, this might be in your report. Um, but when you think about uh, you know healthcare, electronic medical records, really important part of the solution for healthcare. Um, uh, but if we have electronic me electronic medical records and we're not connecting clinics all over the all over the country, doctors, patients all over the country, we won't be able to achieve some of the cost reduction benefits of healthcare and the better provision of services. Uh, the same thing is true for, for energy, for education, incredibly important. Um, and then the third platform that I think about with respect to broadband is broadband as a platform for, call it government 2.0. Uh, our government uh, can perform better, it can provide better services to more people for less money if it turns to the internet, but only if Americans who rely on government for services are on the internet. Uh, and it's another way in which broadband will be an important part of our overall national strategy for the 21st century. Now, when it comes to thinking through how to tackle broadband, there are two big buckets. Commissioner Copps knows this extremely well. There is what folks at the FCC call the deployment bucket. You know, how can we make sure that broadband is available in every community across the country. It's a hard problem. The second problem is what we call the adoption problem. Um, because there are actually many, many communities across the country, uh, 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 the large majority of, country, of communities across the country that have broadband access, but where the adoption rates in those communities are low. So across the country, uh, the, uh, you know, roughly 40% of the country doesn't um, have access to broadband, and I think it's roughly 40% of people who do have access don't subscribe. A very important point is that those percentages of people who don't subscribe, even where they could, are significantly higher in some very important communities. In low-income communities, in among the elderly, in Spanish-speaking communities, and in minority communities. The adoption rates are not. The adoption rates are too low, and even lower than they are everywhere else. And if we're going to uh, work to have broadband be this platform for economic growth and opportunity, for solving national problems, for bringing government into the 21st century, we all have to work together to solve this. This is why we're running at the FCC uh, the an unparalleled. Um, open participatory process on broadband. Many people here have actually participated in open workshops that we've held. Um, there are more open workshops happening all the time. This is a new technique at the FCC where we have people in. Um, uh, staff leads uh, substantive discussions, asks hard questions. These are streamed live on the internet, available for everyone. Uh, uh, I encourage all of you to continue to participate in those workshops. The Commission will be doing some hearings in the fall as well. I encourage broad participation in that. And the kind of participation we need is the kind of participation that the Commission is now getting from the Joint Center with this kind of report. Uh, I know you won't just send us a report and forget about it. I know you're going to send us the report and you're going to come in and you're going to make sure we understand the important facts, the important conclusions, and that everyone at the Commission knows um, uh, uh, what you found and what you recommend that the Commission do. Um, everything that you've heard that I've said today, um, I learned from Commissioner Copps. <laughs> uh, uh, and this is true, I've only been working with Commissioner Copps for a few months, but of course Commissioner Copps has been working on these issues for so hard, for so long, there actually isn't anything I can say on this subject that he hasn't already said. And, and I just, I try. Uh, and, uh, um, uh, but it's very hard. Uh, extraordinary background, uh, working with Ralph for Senator Hollings uh, uh, in a senior important position at the Commerce Department. And now for the last, I'm going to forget the number of years, like eight years uh, at the FCC, such an important time for the country in a time where it was so important to have Commissioner Copps pounding the table for the kinds of issues that he continues to pound the table on and that I hope he does for many, many years. So uh, it is uh, really a pleasure for me and uh, puts me in exactly the appropriate role to be introducing the person who knows much more about this 
so much to teach all of us, so much to teach all of the commission. Uh, I, I honor the work that you've done, Commissioner Copps, in all of these areas, and it's more than my pleasure to introduce you today to this great group.